Hi everyone, in this video we're testing automotive wideband sensors. Particularly, we're going to test whether or not it's worth upgrading your older wideband sensor to the latest Bosch LSU Advance and we're going to make our own microcontroller to compare the differences. So, wideband sensors, or as Bosch calls it, the Lambda Sensor U for Universal, are used for tuning the air fuel ratio in a car. Now, I'm a hobbyist tuner. I like anything that's kind of electronics or mechanical, and whether it's got a computer or not, I'll be in there kind of changing things. So, this is the experiment. I have had the common uh, LSU 4.9 sensor in the car for about five years. Now, recently, I did a dyno tuning test. There's the dyno result. So it's a home-built iron line, and I'm running a $50 Delco computer, which I tuned myself. And there's results. Uh, barely over 5,000 RPM, just a lazy run, and it made 433 horsepower. And check out that torque curve. It just goes straight up at 4,000 RPM. That's because I'm feeding 10 PSI boost into it. And it makes a whopping 481 foot-pounds of torque at the tyres. So hopefully a 10-second run in the future. And the tuners came back and said they don't think my wideband sensor is accurate enough as theirs is showing different data. Now, Bosch has come out with a newer sensor in about 2018 called the LSU Advance or ADV. And there's some big differences in it versus the older 4.9. Now, the 4.9 came out in around 2011, and it has updated, and it was an upgrade to the older 2001 release, the 4.2. So I decided to spend a little bit more money and get the LSU ADV for advance. Now, the, the difference is... It's hard to tell by looking at it, but if you look here, the uh, hexagon temperature of the 4.9 is 600 degrees, so that's where this bolt is. So it can now handle about 820 degrees, so more heat. So if your car produces more power, there's probably going to be more heat there at this um, hexagon bolt. But apart from that, generally it's outputting the same data, but there is a big difference with how the sensor is built. Now, the 4.9 uses a trimming resistor. There it is there. We can see it in the data sheet. The connector module contains a trimming resistor. Now, the tr trimming resistors are used in all types of sensors. It doesn't have to be automotive. It can be thermostats. It can be medical. But basically, there's a little resistor inside that's got high accuracy. And the controller for this sensor can compare the internal trimming resistor because it knows the value. It knows that there is, it knows that the trimming resistor has got high accuracy, and it can make adjustments to the data that this sensor is putting out because the sensor itself isn't accurate enough. So what's happened is. They have removed the trimming sensor because they have made the sensor itself highly accurate. So that goes from a six wire setup, which was this one. If you look down in the data sheet, you can see there's six pins here, six wires. And pin number five is the trimming resistor. And a controller has to do more maths to work out what is the value of the trimming resistor and then make adjustments to make this sensor more accurate. If we look at the data sheet here for the advanced sensor, where's the pin out? Okay, number five has been deleted. NC, no connection. So no longer do they need a trimming resistor to improve the accuracy because they have made this sensor highly accurate on its own. So here is how the experiment is going to work. I've installed both wideband sensors, the older U sensor and the newer advanced sensor into the car. And we're going to use a common microcontroller, the Arduino Uno. Now, if you haven't seen one of these before, don't get scared. I'll explain this, how it's going to work quite simply. 
Now this controller, we will program to read the output data of both datas, uh, of both sensors, and we will display it on this little OLED screen here. It's a tiny little 128 by 64 OLED, and we will print out the value of both sensors as we drive the car to see what the difference is. So wiring the OLED is the first thing I have already done. It requires four wires, and we need to connect the four pins up to the microcontroller, and that is simple. One is five volts and ground just to power the little OLED, and the other one is to be able to send data to it. One's a system clock, and one sends the data. It's that simple. Connecting the wideband sensors to this microcontroller will be even easier. Uh, each sensor has a single output wire, and, and, and it's an analog voltage between 0 volts and 5 volts, which just happens to match the exact voltage that this little microcontroller uses. Now, if you're new to car um, computers like uh, Hollies and Heltex, they're pretty much just a microcontroller, a bigger version of this, and all the electronics are practically the same. So. The um, wideband sensor has a 0 to 5 volt range, and 0 volts equals 10 to 1 AFR, and if it's 5 volts, well then it's 20 to 1 AFR. So we just have to connect them to an analog pin. We will connect the first, the advanced sensor to 0, A0, A zero, analog 0, and then the older um, wideband controller, the 4.9, we will connect to pin A1 to read data. Now this microcontroller has uses a analog to digital converter ADC and it's a 10 bit analog to digital converter. What does 10 bits mean? Well, 1 bit is a binary digit which is 0 or 1 and it can use 10 of them. So, a binary digit has got two kind of values, 0 or 1, and it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and we do that 10 times and we get a max resolution of 1024. Now this analog in system uses 5 volts and we can divide the 5 volts 1024 times. That gives us a very high resolution and accuracy of data to display from the sensors. So now I'm going to show you how the code works on the microcontroller. If this is the first time you've seen any code, don't be afraid, stick around, I'll show you this very quickly, it's very easy to program anything. So, the first part here you've got include. These are including libraries, these are necessary libraries to power the OLED screen, nice and simple. And we're going to refer to it as display. The next thing we need to define in our code is those two analog pins that the wideband sensors are connected to. Now, the Arduino knows them as A0 and A1. We're just defining them and, calling and, and giving them a name so we can refer to them in our code as pin A0 and pin A1. And here we go. We've got the wideband sensor input the LSU Advanced, a new one, and we've got the old one going into A1. So now we know that those pins are connected and being used. Uh, we're going to set up our display. The display is going to turn on. Now this part of the code is where the microcontroller is constantly reading those input pins to get a voltage reading of the sensors. We've given them a name, so int is short for integer, and that's for whole numbers. The microcontroller only knows the ADC number of up to the, uh, what was it, a 10-bit ADC? So a value of anywhere up to 1024. Computers always start reading at, at 0, so it'll be 0 to 1023. So that's a whole number. But we want to know what that voltage is, so we need to convert that ADC number to a voltage number, and that's going to be giving us a decimal place. So in computer speak, that's the that's what a float is. It means it's a uh, floating point integer, or a, or a number with a decimal. So we need to convert that um, that value of anywhere between zero and 1,023 to a voltage between 0 and 5 volts. So we're going to call voltage 1 the voltage that the new wideband sensor gives us. 
we need to um, the voltage will be 5 volts and we'll divide it by the total 1023 to give us our voltage number and we're doing that for voltage 2 which we've named for our old wideband sensor so now we're getting a, a decimal place voltage okay that's okay but that's not good for our display we now need to convert that voltage to an AFR reading that car tuning or us car tuners can understand so the air fuel ratio we want to see 14.7 to 1 this car is a petrol car so stoichiometry uh, for petrol is 14.7 to 1 but whatever that uh, AFR reading is we need to do some more maths now let me show you how I do the mathematics so we need to do some simple mathematics to convert the uh, analog voltage signal to a AFR ratio, air fuel ratio number now we're going to use a fraction to calculate the linear relationship between those two number ranges now we'll use the fraction so the number range on the bottom will be the voltage remember the range is 0 to 5 and on the top is the AFR and the range for that is 20 parts to 1 to 20 parts to 1 and we got that number from the controller that we're using that's just what they've told us is the corresponding number to this voltage so we need to figure out what the linear ratio is so every time this voltage changes we need to calculate um, what that number is what that ratio is to get an AFR so we just need to find out what the difference is we're going to simplify it to a simple fraction and it's the difference so the AFR would be 20 minus 10 and we'll use 5 minus 0 volts so we just need to know the difference to find out the simple ratio uh, 20 minus 10 is 10 and we'll do 5 minus 0 is 5 so that's the simplest ratio 10 divided by 5 is 2 so every time we get a voltage read from our uh, from our sensors let's say um, it reads 2.5 so we've got 2.5 volts we need to multiply that by 2 and that's going to give us 5 which we add to 10 because that's the minimum remember we're not starting at 0 we're starting at 10 10 is the minimum and that'll give us a AFR of 15 to 1 and back here that is uh, in computer speak that's also a float so this is uh, a memory uh, uh, a variable we're putting in memory with data type float floating point it's got a decimal place we're just going to call it AFR1 so that's our new sensor and AFR2 will be our old sensor so we're going to be storing the mathematic conversion and you can see here you got that minimum 10 plus uh, whatever voltage we've read and we're going to multiply it by 2 because that's our linear ratio and that gives us a simple AFR on the screen now we need to update the two AFR values on our OLED so we're going to clear the screen from from the old value and um, down here you can see very simple code that is we're going to put a left column and a right column and we're just going to set the cursor at an X and Y coordinates and we're going to label it LSU advanced so that shows on the screen and we're going to do the same thing we're going to print LSU 4.9 there's our X and Y coordinate um, now we're going to make a bigger text uh, a larger font size and we're going to put those AFR numbers next to these labels so we know what's what so literally we're just telling to the display to set the cursor to this X and Y coordinate and we want to print the number AFR1 and we're going to tell it to do a two decimal places now if you're used to automotive tuning and you're seen Hollies and Haltex and all that they only use a single uh, digit placeholder so you'll see 14.7 one decimal place but we've actually got the resolution to go to two decimal places and I thought I may as well 
go to that level of accuracy because I don't know what to expect. I don't know if the sensors are going to be that close or so far apart. But one decimal place is the industry standard. We're going to outdo the um, EFI tuners of the world and we're going to use two decimal places for more accuracy. We have the resolution. Why not use it? And same thing here. We've just got another command to reset the, the position of the OLED with this X and Y value and then we're going to say right AFR2 the second AFR of the second sensor and that's it that's the code so I told you guys it was simple and I hope hope you guys learned some basic code I know it might sound a bit crazy but it really is simple coding and it's fun there's the two wires from the sensors connected to the Arduino and there's our little OLED displaying the AFRs from both sensors surprisingly there's a huge difference between the two Already it looks like it's worth the upgrade. down to a stop so it should be around 14.7 which the top one is and the other one's saying it's lean so that looks far more accurate than the old one put a bit of load down and it should richen up 14 to 1 is correct around 14 to 1 but there's a big difference between both of them under load Definitely the top one is showing much more resolution as it moves around with more data. So I'm cruising now and it should be lean cruising. So the real world testing of those sensors confirmed that the old sensor did need to be replaced. It wasn't as accurate and it wasn't responding as quickly as the new one. There's no official data from Bosch that says how often the sensor should be replaced. But definitely in the tuning scene you hear it mentioned a bit whether it's five years or, or whatever it is. Now, if you are going to upgrade to the new advanced sensor, you will have to make sure that your controller or car computer supports it. Hope you liked the video, guys. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. See you guys in the next video.